Good afternoon to those of you that are watching our live feed of this Google Hangout uh, related to DECA virtual business challenges uh, for the 2012-13 school year. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We hope this will be an informative session and I think you're going to get a lot out of it. You're going to get some great advice from uh, an expert uh, teacher that, that participates heavily in the virtual business challenges. Uh, his students have had great success over the past years and uh, He's agreed to join us today to, to share some of his wisdom. Um, Frank Rosa is at Aponiquit High School in Massachusetts. And um, I'm going to turn it over to him in just a few minutes and let him tell you how great the virtual business challenges are, how to use them in your classroom as instructional tools, how to motivate your students, and how excited they're going to be uh, once they become involved with these challenges. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is to give you some just very general information about the challenges. There are four challenges this year. We have uh, a personal finance challenge. It's called the, the Dollars and Cents Challenge. It's sponsored by H&R Block, and uh, students are you know, have to learn all about financial literacy and personal finances through this particular challenge. The second one is uh, the Virtual Business Challenge Restaurant Edition. This is a new one uh, for the 12-13 year. Students are challenged to run a successful restaurant operation in a, in a virtual environment. They have to make purchasing decisions, um, you know, seating decisions, location decisions, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's new and we're very excited uh, to have the restaurant addition because it'll, it only strengthen, strengthens DECA's hospitality uh, cluster events. The third event is the Virtual Business Challenge retail version and uh, students run a, a retail operation and again they've got to make purchasing decisions, pricing decisions, etc. The fourth challenge is sports. Students will run uh, a sports franchise. They've got to uh, do ticket pricing, they've got to figure out um, you know, advertising in the stadium, etc. I don't want to give away too much. Frank can uh, allude to some of this. But there are four different simulations that your DECA members can participate in at no cost. There's no cost uh, for any of the challenges. It's free to DECA members. Uh, there's no software that you have to purchase. Um, two of the challenges operate uh, online and two you just download a free competition version. So there's no cost to you, there's no cost to your students, and uh, it's a great learning experience. The registration period is currently open for round one. Uh, today is October the 17th and the round one competition begins on Monday, uh, October the 22nd. So you can register this week and on Monday your students can uh, actually begin playing the competition round one. There is a round two and round two doesn't start until January the 7th and students can participate in two rounds if they choose to do so. Um, so those are sort of the, the pieces that I'd like to get out there to make you aware of. Um, if you are looking at your DECA guide, uh, go to pages 174 and 175 in your DECA guide for information about the four challenges. At this time I'd like to turn it over to Frank Rosa at Aponiquot High School in Massachusetts. Uh, Frank uh, has served on DECA's Competitive Events Task Force uh, before. He's had students that have performed very, very well in the challenges. His students routinely uh, are finalists at the International Conference. Uh, so uh, I'm going to turn it over to him, and uh, if you have questions, uh, please let us know, and we'll try to uh, filter the questions and, and answer your, your questions. Frank, it's all yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hope you guys have uh, started a, a great year this year in DECA and got off on the right foot, your leadership conferences and the like. Um, I want to say right from the outset that I am not a gamer. Uh, my kids do video games. I've, that's something that, that I've done. However, I've got kids throughout the years that love video games. And we started with retailing and then we got into sports. Personal finance came out and now restaurant. Um, I offer the game to all my students. They choose the ones that they want to do based on what they like to do. Um, I'm fortunate enough that we actually purchase the games, so I use them in class. 
um, they're great, especially the new online versions, anytime learning. So if a kid is absent, they can go ahead and do that. To explain the games real quick is there are lessons associated with each of the games. You can assign them. The ones that are online now, they do it online. I can go on, register, log in as myself, and I can see how the students are doing. So there are reading quizzes or math quizzes. What's great about these games are they are linked to the standards. And so it's like buying a book. And you know I've had different marketing books, but now you basically have a book on sports, on personal finance, on restaurant, and on retailing. They're great. The kids love them. The retailing one we started with first. I always tell my students, you will never, ever walk into a Cumberland Farms, 7-Eleven, uh, uh, whatever it is, ever again look at it the same way. They get into it. They absolutely love it. The next game we did was sports. You know, we're fortunate, New England Patriots. And um, it's the, with the success of the Patriots, we've had some success as well. And the kids love that as well because it, it's going to get updated. But it talks about starting a franchise from picking a location to ticket pricing to sponsorships to player management. Once again, it's, it's a topic that the kids love. So that was the second game. The third game is, is the one I, I feel that they hit a home run with. It's personal finance. It's basically taking someone who graduates from high school, takes the game about themselves, and then to go out and get an apartment, to get a job, um, to get an education, to keep moving. Um, to better themselves. And so the kids really like that. And they learn many things, as an example, renter's insurance and filing taxes. So these are, you know, hands-on things, all three games that they can relate to. The, the last game they're starting this year, um, we just started that, is the restaurant game. It, I had a girl who was trying to decide what two categories to do in, to, to compete in. She loves sports and she loves food. And so basically with virtual business, you get both. So all the games are there. As far as the kids competing, like I said at the beginning, I don't have to be the expert. I can um, allow the kids the opportunity to do it, and they will run with it. They will run with it. They will compete, you know, stories going back through the years. Um, the kids just love it. They're doing it at home. They're doing it at their own time. It's something they really enjoy. And, and so don't be afraid of not knowing everything about it. The big thing is that everyone should have received an email, I believe, through DECA from Knowledge Matters, telling you how to log in as an advisor, a password, set it up. The students, um, and I believe DECA will be sending out a PowerPoint that explains how to register, but the kids simply register. You'll get an email as an advisor. You'll take a look at the team name, make sure it's appropriate. You'll verify from the students that, yes, student A, B, and C want to work together, and then you simply just go ahead and approve it. And once it's approved, once the thing starts on 1022, they're ready to go. 10 a.m., my students are ready to jump on the game. And they work on it until 5 o'clock on, I believe, the first one ends on November 16th. They will be there. They'll be trying to do it. So as an advisor, all you have to do is just simply sign in, register, and then give the information to your students, and they will get on there. They can come and ask you questions. And by the way, Knowledge Matters loves to help. If you have any questions at all, um, Maureen is one of them there. Jonathan is there as well. If you have questions, don't feel like you don't have backup. They, they'll back you up if there's problems. They're more than willing to help. So as far as an advisor is, um, you can jump right in and start right away, and the kids will like it. And um, it, each kid will pick a different game so they can decide what they want to do. Um, I'm trying to think, Shane, what else that I've, I've left out as far as, um, once again, the instructional piece is great for those who can afford it. Um, and they usually give out grants every year for the personal finance game. That H&R Block is, is, is gracious. They give out $10,000 per team member for first place. That's a great incentive. Uh, the kids who have won it before, and you know, I've met kids from other schools, the parents love it when they come back from ICDC and they get $10,000 to go towards their college. So that is a, a, a great thing um, with them. And, and once again, Knowledge Matters does a great job as well. One of the questions that I have um, that I get commonly asked is how do you introduce the challenges to your students for the first time and, and get them excited about it um, in the classroom? 
Uh, well, I I have two things. I have a DECA class. It's not a DECA class. It's a class in which I teach marketing. So I have those students. So that's part of our curriculum. And so we will go ahead and we will go through the lessons. We just finished the sports one uh, earlier this week. And then we'll start to play the game itself. On We've already had people register. Now I have a bunch of students that I don't have in class this semester or maybe with another teacher. We'll have a meeting tonight in fact at 6.30 at school and we're going to introduce those who don't have it. We'll show them the games, we'll go over it, we'll end up coming back upstairs and we'll register kids. If for me, once you start and you have one kid who likes it, the other kids want to do it as well. Word of mouth marketing within your classroom, within your chapter. It, it could be I have siblings of students that were in, in DECA before. But kids who like video games love to see their name at the top of the list. And once kids start to play and they upload their score, they'll say they'll go right away to to the state, then they'll go to North Atlantic, and then they'll go to nationally. And those kids get hooked. And then once you have a few kids, the other kids want to do that. But you can give them, um, you can go online, you can show them, and try to find out. Each kid picks their own game. I don't force kids to do all every game, so they can pick what they want. And, and, you know, obviously I talk about the game, I talk about my kids that have gone before them and what they've done, and, and you grab them that way. Um, just like, I'll plug the stock market game, you know, it's another game that they have. You, you want to find the kids that are interested in that, and you show them that, and it'll take off. It, it, it'll run by itself once you get going. Another question that I uh, receive uh, pretty frequently is from the advisors, and they're reluctant to try it just because they're scared. Uh, you, you started off saying you're not a gamer and you still do this, but how, if you had some advice to give a teacher that's never tried the virtual business uh, challenges before, uh, they're, they're a little bit timid and shy about that, that technology component, what would you say to them? Um, first of all, I would say them it's very easy. You know, we call it the kids of the natives. They've grown up on technology, so they're not afraid of it. It, it, it is simply as, you know, first of all, you have to have confidence in, in the fact that you're going to have kids go on a system and it's secure. So if you worry about kids going on that, you don't have to worry about it. It, it is a secure site. Um, knowledge matters. Everything is security. And that's a lot of times where, where people have a concern about, you know, hey, I'm having a kid go online, they're registering, they're giving all their information. Everything is secure, so you can forget, forget about that. You can also be assured is that what they're learning ties in with national standards. It, it ties in with something that transcends from sports to restaurant to personal finance to retailing. They could use information from this as an example to do, um, if they're doing personal finance, maybe they're doing a, a finance research paper for DECA. Maybe they're com competing in business, service, uh, business services or business financial services. It, it's another way for students to learn more information to compete in whatever they're competing in. And if you look at it that way, and I know I do, I always wish I could give my kids more information. This is an easy way to have your kids learn more simply by playing a game, simply by doing a simulation that they all love to do. For those advisors that, that have tried it before, but maybe they haven't had a student qualify to advance to the international uh, conference, you know, they, they see their name, you know, the student's name is you know, progressing up the list, but maybe they haven't quite gotten to that, that point yet. Do you have any advice for those advisors and students that are, that are trying to take it to the next level? Um, when we started originally, it was trying to get not just um, that one kid to do it, but to have a group of kids do it. And one of the things that we did was we had a kickoff pizza party um, the day that it started. And I had a, a ending pizza party like the two weeks before, um, excuse me, the, the two days before, to get more kids involved, to have them talk to one another. Uh, one thing I have is some kids like to work alone, typical gamer, you know, they like to be by themselves. Always, I always have kids working teams. And you'll be surprised and, 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 and quite happy the conversations that begin to develop from working as a team. And so, uh, you know, I, I suggest make sure they work as a team and have them and invite them to ask you questions even if that you might not know the answer the fact that they're asking questions will make them think deeper and hopefully they'll have more success
do you allow your students to, to work on this from home? I know that students can log in uh, to the system from home and, and make modifications. Do you encourage your students to do that, or do you primarily uh, leave this for a, a classroom activity, or is it sort of a hybrid? Um, it, it is definitely a hybrid. Um, if things are going great, I've done the games beforehand, especially when it comes in the second round, which begins in January. We've already done the games. So I would say with that in mind, more, more than 50%, probably 80% of the time, it is not done in class. Um, kids would um, come to see me before school, after school, um, you know, anecdotal stories. The first year, you know, the kids are at a house, they have pay-per-view and they're watching the fight. Uh, one of my kids is actually on the computer playing the game. Um, it, it, one other session, um, uh, we have kids going on vacation up to Maine and they've got it on their laptop and they're playing the game and then when they get in range to upload it, they upload it. You have kids Skyping back and forth between one another. It's tremendous teamwork that you can have the kids work together. So, um, and, and that's also the beauty is I understand my plate is full with everything with Decker, trying to do papers, principles, individual series report. It, it can be as simple as introducing it to the students, show them what it is, and let them go on their own. And then once you have them go on their own, they're going to ask for more. And then eventually, you know, when you have time, um, it, it, and by the way, it's a great thing too if you want to increase it by having the game at home. Instead of assigning homework for other things, their homework could be complete lesson one in virtual business restaurant. And that's another great way to tie it in. So it's not taking up your class time because I know you don't have enough time as it is. It's a way to uh, complement um, what you're doing right now. Those are, are the commonly asked questions that I receive from my desk. Uh, have advisors approached you uh, and asked you other, other questions uh, routinely? They, they, they always ask me, how come the kids do so well? And, and I always tell them this. It's because they put time in. It, it's perseverance, where, where some kids will stop and because they've tried and you know and, and a lot of kids have a lot of things going on in their life and it is, I would say it's like a science experiment you, you have to keep plugging away you have to say okay what if I raise the ticket prices by a dime or well, maybe I have to rise it by a nickel or, or a penny and the kids that do well in it usually are, are very much scientific you know logical uh, mind and they'll just keep plugging away plugging away plugging away and those are the kids um, you talk to Knowledge Matters the highest score usually is the very last day it, because kids are working on it until the end of the challenge. All the way to the end of the day. Oh, perseverance. A lot of trial and error. Uh, yes, a lot of trial and error as, as a science experiment. Absolutely. Well, um, I know that the advisors that have discovered Virtual Business Challenge and, and use it each year, they love it. They're hooked on it. They're, they say their students are very, very engaged. Um, but I know we have a, a segment of DECA advisors that haven't experienced it yet, so I hope that this session will encourage uh, those of you who have not tried it to, to give it a shot. Uh, there's nothing to lose. Uh, there's no cost to you. There's only rewards for your students. There's only concepts that are going to be reinforced uh, through that experience for your students. So uh, if you have questions, please feel free to contact uh, our office. Um, uh, we're happy to walk you through. Uh, you know, the registration process and Knowledge Matters, as Frank has already mentioned, uh, that's the company that actually develops the software programs. They are phenomenal to work with and, um, you know, our, our numbers increase every year uh, participation-wise, but I'd like to see them spike up again this year because of, we have some new events, some new opportunities for students. and. Um, uh, I am a fan of the, the challenges and I uh, wish that I would have used them more uh, when I was still in the classroom uh, because once you discover it, the little light bulb goes off and you go, aha, this is neat. So Frank, do you have any uh, closing words uh, before we sign off? Um, I, I tell everyone it's real easy. Just go ahead and do it. The kids will thank you for it. And good luck to everyone this year. Well, Frank, I'd like to thank you for taking time this afternoon to be with us. I know you are just coming from uh, a, a leadership conference in Massachusetts, so uh, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate your time and, and, uh, and talking to everyone about this, uh, this year's challenges. Again, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to email me. It's uh, Shane underscore Thomas 
at DECA.org. I'm happy to work with you and answer any questions that you may have. Uh, thanks to everyone who joined us today, and uh, this video will be archived on uh, DECA's YouTube channel for later reference, so if you feel like you missed something, uh, you can watch this again and um, share it with your friends that weren't able to make it. Have a great afternoon, everyone.